In this tutorial, I will explain how to set up the header and footer for your website with the Ezra theme. As indicated in an earlier tutorial, if you use the Elementor Pro plugin, you can also design the header and footer even more easily by using the Elementor Pro version. But if you only have the free version of Elementor, then you can use the Ezra theme for that. So you can see how it all works in this tutorial. So what are the header and the footer of a website? If you're completely new to web design, it's good to know that the header refers to the top bar of the page with often the logo and a navigation menu. And the footer is the bottom part of the website and it often also contains the logo with contact details and possibly a couple of links to pages for your website. As I mentioned in the tutorial about setting up the theme for your website, it's important to remember that if you only want to use the free version of Elementor, then you have to rely on the Azure theme to set up the header, the footer, the blog post and archive pages. And you can design the standard pages with the free version of Elementor. But if you have the Elementor Pro upgrade, then the Hello theme is the best choice. And then you can design all parts of the website, including the header, the footer, the post, the archive pages and search result pages with Elementor. This is some important background information that is needed to properly understand the entire process and to determine which theme you need if you're going to get started with your own website. I always use the Elementor Pro plugin because this is much easier and it also offers you beautiful templates and you can design the entire website exactly as you want it to be. And I will show you both ways in the series so you know exactly how everything works. So we're now logged in into the WordPress dashboard. And by the way, if you see a notification at updates, you can update it by clicking on it and you will see, for example, that a newer version for a theme or a plugin is available and you can update it from this place. Now to get started from the WordPress dashboard, go to the left navigation menu, Appearance, and then choose the option Themes. We see that the Azure theme is already activated and to adjust the settings, you just have to click on Customize. Now after the page is loaded, you will see the default header at the top of the page. At the moment, it's still very boring and it would look better if the logo was displayed instead of the title. Now I'll show you how to change some basic settings for the header. For example, to change the color of the bar, you just have to click on the icon at the top left over here. And then you can click on the design tab and in the background option, you can choose a color. You can choose any color you want by using the color palette or by entering a color code in the field below. For this tutorial, I'll just choose the white background color. But if you want a different color, you can set it up here. Now to remove the title, hover over the title and click on the brush icon. Here you will see that the display side title option is enabled. And if you disable it, you'll see that the title is no longer visible. On the left side of your screen, you will also see the options select logo and select site icon. So let's do that right now. In the previous tutorial, I'll show you how to create a logo and a site icon. And now we're going to set it up for the website. So if you missed that tutorial and you don't know how to create a logo and a site icon very easy, I would recommend you to check it out. Now click select logo and click the upload files tab and drag and drop the logo file to upload it. Now select the logo and you can fill in these empty fields over here like the alt enter text, the title, the caption and description and make sure some keywords are in there for which you want your website to be found on in search engines. So in this example I enter luxury watch brands logo black and you can copy and paste this text in the other fields. Then you have to click on select and now you can select which part of the logo should be visible by dragging your mouse. After you're done, you can click on crop image. As you can clearly see, the logo is still too big for the header and we need to make the size a little bit smaller. So for this, you go to the logo width on the left and by dragging over here, you can determine the size. Just see for yourself what you like and I will now set the logo width to something like 130 pixels. Oh, and by the way, it's always the case that the logo links to the homepage of a website. So you don't have to set that up manually. The next step is to ensure that the logo is also properly displayed on tablet and mobile devices. And to do this, you can click on the icon in the middle on the very bottom of the page. And this will switch you over to the tablet view. Over here, I also disabled the site title so that it's not visible. Now you can see that the logo is still too big for this view and you can reduce the size again with the logo width option. 
The setting you are doing now is only for the tablet devices and a small disadvantage is that you cannot see how it really looks on all tablet sizes because there are many different sizes out there. On most screens it just looks good so it's nothing to worry about but with the Elementor Pro version you can really easily check out all different formats in literally a few seconds but we will get to that later in another video. So for now I set the format on tablet to 120 pixels and then we switch to the mobile view by clicking on the right icon at the bottom. For mobile you can now also set the desired size via the logo width option or you can enter a number. 90 pixels seems fine to me, so now let's click on publish to save the settings. By clicking the brush icon again at the logo, we can also add the site icon or favicon, how you want to call it, with the select site icon option. Click on it and then choose the upload files tab on the left. Now drag the file to upload it. Change the title to something relevant such as luxury watch prints site icon and copy this text again in the other fields. Then click select. We see that the icon now has been added to the top of the browser. Now click on the blue publish button to save the changes. The last step to finish the header is to set up the navigation menu. At this moment only the about us, contact and home pages are shown in the menu because this is set by default. To adjust this you can go back to the WordPress dashboard and you can do that by clicking on the cross icon. Now go to the menus option which you can find under appearance and here we see that no menu has been created yet. So that's what we're going to do now. First you have to enter a name and it does not matter which name you choose because visitors cannot see this. This is only for the administrator. So I fill in menu 1 and then go to the primary menu and click on create menu. So every time when you add a new page or blog post to your website you can add it to the menu as well by checking it over here and then click on add to menu. And for this example I only want the about us and contact pages to show so I add them by clicking the button. You can also choose a category and add it in the same way. Now I save the menu by clicking on the blue button and go back again to the theme settings via appearance and here I click on customize. Now we see that the links have been changed and are displayed exactly as we have set them. To change the settings click on the brush icon in the navigation menu. Now click on the design tab and at the menu color option you can set the colors. I changed the first color to black and here we also have a few options and the first one that we have set just now is normal, the second is hover, and that's the color that you see when you move the mouse over the text and I adjust this to light gray and I copy the color code and I set this also for the third option and that's the active color. So if you're on the about us page for example the link will be continuously gray because that is the active page. With the menu font option you can select a different font but I think it's fine as it is now with inherit. You can then view how it looks on tablet again by clicking on the tablet icon at the very bottom. Now you see that the option toggle button is also shown under the option general. Click on it and at the option icon size you can adjust the size if necessary. I'll just leave it as it is and if you want to you can also change the style in the toggle button style option. You have three options to choose from so pick one that you like. To set the color you can click on the design tab and I also set the icon color to black. Now click on the toggle button to expand the menu and click on the blue brush icon. Go to the design tab and adjust the link color to black. Go back to general and you will notice that the correct menu is not yet shown. To choose the correct menu you can click configure menu from here. Now go to the off canvas option and select the menu you've created earlier in the WordPress dashboard. In this case it's menu 1. Now we see that the right menu is displayed. Now also view how the display is on mobile and if everything is to your liking. You can save the settings by clicking on publish again. Now we're done with the header and we can move on to the footer at the bottom of the page. You can change the text in the footer by clicking on the brush icon and entering a new text in the text field. For example, you can remove the part powered by Ezra WordPress theme. With the alignment option you can align the text to the left, right or the middle if you wish. To adjust the color of the text you can click on the design tab and then choose a different color via the icon at text color. I change the color to white. To change the background color of the bar you can then again click on the brush icon on the left side 
and then click on the design tab and adjust the color at background. In this example I will make the background black. You can add the logo as an image next to the text by adding an extra column to the section. To do this on the left side, for example with the first option column you can select two or more columns. After you have selected two you can also choose how the ratio of the columns should be but I will leave it as it is. To add the logo you can now click on the plus sign in the column and then choose the option widget 1. Now click on widget 1 in the column and now you can add a widget on the left. Click on the plus icon and now you will see an overview of all the different widgets that you can add. So now I select image and after the widget has been added you can click on add image to select the image and in this case it's the logo in white color with a transparent background. You can change the title if necessary to something that is relevant for SEO such as luxury watch brands logo white and after that click on the blue add to widget button. Now we see that the logo is visible but it's still very large so we're going to make it a little bit smaller and you can change this by clicking edit image and then select the thumbnail option and then I click on update. I also set the alignment for the logo to the right. The only thing I still want to adjust in the footer is to move the text a little bit more to the middle so that it fits better with the logo. Click on the text and go to the margin and enter 35 pixels at top. You can also enter a higher or lower value to change the position. Now go to the tablet view and there we see that the position is now also good. And we go to the mobile view and over here we fill in 10 at top and also at the bottom margin. You could also add an extra column and for example add an extra widget such as a navigation menu and this way you can completely build the footer per widget in different layers and columns. But for now I'll just leave it clean and basic as it is. Don't forget to hit the blue publish button to save the settings. In the general tab we can align the text to the left with the alignment option. But I will also leave this as it is for this example. I always use the S theme as a backup theme so I don't spend too much time on it unless you don't want to purchase the Element Pro version and really want to use this S theme as your primary theme. In the next tutorial I'll show you how you can do all of this much faster and easier with the Elemental Pro version. So thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and also make sure to hit the notification bell so you stay updated when new videos are uploaded. So that was it for now and I hope to see you again in the next video.